Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon and I am here to tell you that social media is dying. It is dying according to the LA Times and I actually tend to agree. I think that this is this is happening. Uh, we've done videos about it before talking about how the internet is fundamentally changing whether or not it's for the better. We'll see what happens, right? We'll, we'll wait and see what happens. But uh, Twitter being effectively destroyed and dismantled by Elon Musk was a huge catalyst, but other social media platforms aren't doing so hot these days either. It could be that we are past peak social media. It could be that people go back to independent websites. It could be that people go back to using message boards. That would be kind of cool, I think, because we would have a decentralized internet. The problem with social media, from my point of view, is that a handful of companies control all of the communication, all of the information. And we've seen, we've seen what happens when that is the case. And uh, I think a more decentralized democratic internet like we had before, before Facebook and before Twitter, you know, before uh, Google decided it wanted to be a whole lot more than just a search engine would be the way to go. But now the LA Times is actually chiming in saying, yeah, it feels like the end. It feels like the end of social media. So we're going to talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants, guys. Occasional tech news. If you go out to clownfishtv.com, uh, you'll find some stories on uh, tech uh, because it does pertain to pop culture because tech is used to promote pop culture. And, uh, you know, it's just not working as well as it used to, right? And the collapse of social media is actually leading to the collapse of a lot of, a lot of these websites, these pop culture websites, gaming news sites, uh, movie news websites, because a lot of them used, you know, Facebook or Twitter to push their content. And that's not working as well anymore because people aren't there. And uh, it's not as easy to, to game the system. Now, I guess Facebook in particular, that was used by BuzzFeed and, and uh, so many other publications. And, you know, now when you go to leave the site, you know, it gives people a jumping off point. It's like, are you sure you want to leave Facebook? Oh, you really don't want to leave Facebook. You want to stay here where we can advertise to you, right? That's it. And they do everything they can do to keep you on their platform because the advertising revenue is drying up. And uh, we're going to talk about this. So this is coming from the LA Times. And this is one of several articles now. Every, everyone is lamenting the death of, of uh, Twitter. You know, like, oh my God, the Washington Post. Fleeing Elon Musk's ex, the quest to recreate black Twitter. Oh my God, guys, uh, you, you destroyed Twitter. Where, where are all the activists going to go? What is X? This is coming from Stuff. What is X? Why does Elon Musk want an everything app? And why did Twitter have to die for it? Why did Twitter have to die so X could live? Um, <laughs> so everyone is calling the time of death on, on Twitter now. And uh, I have to admit, I have to admit that uh, I am quite happy that Twitter is gone. Now, X basically feels like the same thing, but with fewer crazy people and more monetization, uh, at least from my point of view. But I am so glad that uh, Twitter is gone and these people are, are so angry. But it's not just Twitter. It's not just uh, Twitter. Facebook is not doing well either. So this person, this writer, Brian Merchant uh, from the LA Times, observed that uh, he took a couple of days off because he was sick. And he noticed that something was off, seriously off, so much that I couldn't help myself, he said, uh, grudgingly agreeing with the critics who have been warning that we are witnessing the end days for social media networks as we knew it. Uh, I've been saying this too. We've been saying this on this channel. Like this feels like a hand grenade was tossed into the uh, ecosystem. You know, it only cost $44 billion. But, you know, Twitter being destroyed, dismantled, you know, on top of Facebook kind of cratering and uh, other sites like Tumblr being completely irrelevant at this point. It does feel like the end of, of social media. On Twitter, excuse me, X, he says, there seem to be as many ads for Cheech and Chong's cannabis products as posts from people I actually recognize. That's true. Like every other post now on, on X uh, is an ad. And it's usually an ad for some pretty questionable stuff. But, uh, you know, so is the New York Times. Have you seen the sex toy reviews on the New York Times? That's being promoted on Twitter now. The New York Times, the gray lady. Is she gray everywhere? Who knows? Uh, when I wrote a post 
A reply instantly materialized from a bot trying to interest me in a video about how to make money off of crypto. <laughs> it felt like logging directly into a late night infomercial. Uh, they got to make money, $44 billion. That's a lot of money. The alternatives weren't much better, though. Threads, Meta's competing product, launched by Mark Zuckerberg to much fanfare just weeks ago, felt vaguely cheery but ultimately vacant. Yeah, a lot of people quit. More than half of the people that signed up quit. I saw a handful of posts from the same few users and some promotional content from people I must have followed at some point on Instagram, but whose poolside lives looked altogether alien to me now. It was like being in a well-designed but eerily empty mall, a digital dawn of the dead with more photogenic zombies. Yeah, that's kind of what some of the other uh, Twitter alternatives felt like. Like, there's not a lot of people there. I logged off, and as it turns out, I'm not alone. Thread's user count has plunged 82%. Oh my God, 82% since its launch less than a month ago. It was 50% last week. Now it's 82%. After a meteoric and overhyped rise to 100 million users in, in mere days, Threads has been in a steady nosedive. As of August 1st, users who are spending just 2.9 minutes a day there, uh, that's it. That's all they're spending. 2.9 minutes a day on Threads. Basically, pop in, see if anyone's there. No, they're not. I'm leaving. For over a decade, logging on to social media, especially Twitter, has been among the first steps of the day for countless professionals, students, and the very online a way to instantaneously re-enter the fray, get up to date on the latest news, trends, and memes. Over the years, despite the chaos that has tumbled down its feed, it became an orienting force, a way that we parsed and organized information for the coming day or week. So basically, they're having withdrawal from Twitter. People are having withdrawal from Twitter because they don't want to use Elon Musk's version of it because it's Elon Musk's. Actually, they are. They're just going to tell their friends they're not. Well, I'm not on I'm not on X. Of course I'm not. No, I, I, need, I need to be on X. Uh, that force is, for all intents and purposes, extinguished. I'm not alone in thinking so. A journalism intern at Bloomberg wrote about how their peers don't take X seriously and seem surprised at older colleagues who still do. Resolving to delete the app, the intern remarked that the algorithm seems to downrank news and favor reactionary politics. That has been the case on Twitter for at least half a decade or more. That is the problem. Actually, from my point of view, as someone who has been on Twitter slash X since almost the beginning, I was there within, I think, the first year of it you know, being something that people were talking about because we were doing webcomics. And webcomics people are always early adopters uh, for this kind of stuff. Uh, the current iteration of Twitter, X, feels more like OG Twitter to me. Because it did become hyper politicized. Now, yeah, there are there a lot of people talking politics? Yeah, how come how come it's problematic now to talk politics on X? But it wasn't problematic before. It wasn't problematic to to ban the president. You know what I'm saying? Like that wasn't pro that wasn't political. That wasn't problematic at all. But now it's a problem. I'm just saying. You know, old habits die hard. He says I've been logging into Twitter at the start of every working day since 2011. It's easy to let muscle memory take over and keep refreshing the feed regardless of what's befallen the place. That's why taking a break and logging back in is such a stark wake-up call. And I use the occasion to embark on a casual investigation of the state of social media a year into its supposed death. Well, actually, what's interesting is that there aren't a lot of other alternatives. I think a lot of people are just moving on to other things. Actually, I think what's going on is people are going to like Discord and they're starting private Discords. Uh, they're hanging out in the comment sections of uh, videos, whether it's YouTube or TikTok. You know, they're not going to Facebook so much anymore. They're not going to Twitter or slash X as much as they used to. So this, uh, he headed over to Blue Sky, which seemed to, uh, to face the opposite issue that Threads did. The place seemed noisy and vibrant, but also all but impenetrable to a lay user showing up occasionally and without much of a community. It's a place where Twitter power users and online activists have felt the most at home, and that's great, but I kind of stared blankly for a few minutes and after no new post loaded for a minute or two, gave up the ghost. Um, so Blue Sky, he said, feels overstuffed and sluggish, and uh, then they talk about Mastodon, the first of the true blue Twitter competitors to arise after Musk took the reins and broke out the wrecking ball. It's my favorite of the alternatives by wide margin, but it's also quiet. 
Nice and quiet, but quiet nonetheless. It's kind of what happened to Tumblr, too. After all the crazies went to Twitter, uh, Tumblr quieted down considerably. The most pervasive knocks on Mastodon are that it's confusing for new users at first, and it's relatively hard to find the people you want to follow. I think the first complaint is overstated. The second rings true. Actually, a lot of comic book people thought they were going to go to Mastodon. They're all like, follow me on Mastodon. Then they're like, I don't know how to Mastodon. Also, elephants are problematic. Um, <laughs> I mostly wound up following academics and progressive tech folks on Mastodon. But yeah, it's just like, he says, quiet if you don't know where to look. The empty mall, the airship kegger. Um, in theory, you can attend them all. In reality, who has the time? So Twitter has already been eulogized to death, but they said that Facebook is not far behind. Um, you know, it may well come to be that the last 10 years of this kind of centralized, this is what I'm talking about, centralized digital life will be seen as an aberration and visiting a few more diversified suites of communities, platforms, and websites will revert to being the norm as it was in the 90s and early 2000s. Thank you for saying that. That's what I've been saying. I've been on the internet since the internet was pretty much a thing, right? I mean, going back to CompuServe and uh, Prodigy and you know, seeing the advent of websites and personal websites and, and building websites for people before they even knew what the hell websites were. And I think that's what's going to happen. I think, I think we're going to have a lot of, you know, message boards or groups or whatever. And a lot of the stuff is still going to happen. A lot of the discourse is still going to happen. A lot of the really toxic shit is still going to happen, but it's going to happen in private or it's going to happen on a website nobody's heard of. You know, a lot of people that can't build their own site are going to discord and they're, you know, talking crazy talk in private and people aren't seeing it. Uh, or they're, again, they're you know, frequenting message boards that nobody's heard of. And, and that's what's going on. So Corey Doctorow has argued this is not only likely but necessary. And I agree with Corey Doctorow that the accumulated weight of years of bad policy decisions and the platform's evolution into overstuffed monopolies leave little alternative but to let them burn, as we would a wildfire that may appear cataclysmic but is in fact needed to clear out the forest fire. If we're smart, we'll push for more democratic and responsive platforms in the process. So that's what's interesting. Uh, this is a guy who obviously is on the left, um, you know, judging by, by the places he was going to and what he was looking for. And he's saying we need to let social media burn, let it burn down and let private websites pop up again. And I think that is partially true. I think, uh, you know, back you know, as far as the politicization of social media, I think it happened when we crossed the streams when everybody just started going to the same sites. Cause normally people that were into certain uh, activities or certain politics or whatever, the streams very seldom crossed. They would stay on their forums. Other people would stay on their forums. You'd have, you know, this group or that group and those things never really crossed. But once you threw everybody into the mix on a site like Twitter or on Facebook, where they want you to be engaged with people, even if the engagement is negative. And then a lot of times they will throw you in front of a bus, you know, figuratively, figuratively speaking, to get you to interact with somebody, to get a rise out of people, because that's interaction. And the more time you spend on that website, on their website, on their app, the more they can market to you, the more advertising they can shove in your face. And that's the purpose of it. I honestly think a lot of the problems that we have in this country current year were manufactured, were uh, blown out of proportion by social media. I think it was designed to make you angry, it was designed to keep you engaged. It was all about marketing to you. That's what it was about. At the end of the day, it was about controlling you, keeping you on the platform, getting you addicted, and then marketing shit to you. And uh, we fell for it. We fell for it for a long time. And I think that, uh, you know, now we're going to roll things back. I think we're going to see the internet calm down a little bit. Maybe people will go back to real life and stop believing everything they see on social media. I don't know. That'd be, it's a nice thought. I doubt it's going to happen, but it's a nice thought. I'm going to wrap this up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.